it's Nini. Welcome to my channel. I like to talk about makeup, face paint, and true crime, but not at the same time. Today I'm going to do a basic brown eyeshadow tutorial. I've received several requests to do this, and when I say several, I mean one, and it was my mother. I realize nobody really watches tutorials anymore, but my mental health has been struggling the past couple months, so sitting down here to record a video and then taking the time to edit it is a healthy thing to do for my mental health. I do want to put a big disclaimer. I do consider myself a makeup artist and a face paint artist, but I don't consider myself a professional, if that makes any sense. I'm just a makeup junkie ever since the time I was 20 years old when I ran into a Mary Kay gal. My love of makeup went into overdrive when I discovered beauty on YouTube several years ago. What I'm gonna talk about today are just some things that I've learned that work good for my eye type. Not everybody can do their eyeshadow the same way and everybody shouldn't do their eyeshadow the same way. Everybody has a different shape of their eyes. Some are more hooded. I never really had hooded eyes, but as I've been getting older, the top is starting to go south just a little bit. I'm not a believer in there's rules to makeup. I think there are some guidelines to how to make your makeup look a little bit more appealing, but I'm not a fan of there being rules. If you want to put blush on the center of your forehead, do it. If you want to put glitter on your lower lash line, do it. If you want to put contour like directly in the middle of your chin, do it. Makeup should be fun. It should be a creative outlook. It should be a way to express yourself. It shouldn't be tucked into this little box of the way it's supposed to be. If you do your eyeshadow completely different of how I'm gonna talk about in this video, that is absolutely fine. I don't do things perfectly. I don't wanna sit here and be like, I know everything about makeup. Cause that's not the case at all. I just enjoy makeup. I do hope you get some tips out of this and that it is helpful in some way. So we will go to Nini in the past who has not done her makeup yet. Before I zoom you in, I want to talk about eye primer. I highly recommend using eye primer. It will make your eyeshadow last longer. My favorite to use is this Urban Decay one. It's an anti-aging primer potion. I am 36 years old. My eyelids are getting a little bit crepey and wrinkly. Whatever the formula is with this one, it just works good with my eyes. There's hundreds of eye primers out there. You just got to find one that works for you. I don't know if it necessarily makes a difference from my experience on making the colors more vibrant. I know that is a claim that some eye primers make. I just noticed that it does make my eyeshadow last longer. I think it blocks the oils on your lids and it just makes a world of difference. So normally what I do is I put it on, but then I do my eyebrows just to give that a little second to set in and then I go on with my eyeshadow. So I'll just pop this on quickly. I have six brushes that I'm gonna talk about. It's not these particular brands of brushes that I wanna talk about. I more wanna talk about the type of brush that it is. And I'll explain about each one as we get into them. I'm only going to use three eyeshadows, but I'm gonna talk about four. If you wanna put one color all over your eye, that's absolutely fine. I used to do my makeup by putting one color in the crease and then a lighter color on the lid. And I did that for years. I just wanna stress so much that it is not how you have to do your eyeshadow. I'm going to use this light brown from the Hocus Pocus palette as my transition color. I'm going to use this dark brown by Color Drain as a crease color. And then for my lid, another one by Color Drain, it's called Angel Face. I'm going to zoom you into this eye because this eye has some sunspots on it. Wear sunscreen, people. When I have like brown eyeshadow on, it looks like I don't know how to blend it. Like there's just a chunk in there. The first thing I do is put down that transition color. Eyeshadow looks nice when it's kind of a gradient of dark to light. Same with your bottom half to go dark to light. If we just put down a dark crease color, we're not gonna get as clean of a gradient. If you can pick out a brown color that is lighter than your crease color, but darker than your skin tone to put as a transition color, that kind of helps with that gradient. The light brown on top is gonna be my transition color, and then the dark brown is gonna be my crease. So it's a little bit lighter than that, and then it's a little bit darker than my skin tone. Just to talk quickly about color theory, what I usually like to do for a transition color is to use a peachy toned one or an orange colored one. And the reason I do that is because orange is a complementary color to blue. Complementary colors enhance each other. So when they're put next to each other, they make each other kind of pop. So that's why I tend to gravitate toward orange and yellow peach colored eyeshadows because they make my blue eyes pop. When you look at the color wheel, any color that is directly across 
from each other is a complementary color. So directly across from blue is your orange and yellows. If you have green eyes, if you look across from green, you're gonna see pinks and reds. So those colors would make your green eyes pop. If you are lucky and you have brown eyes, you can pretty much wear anything and it's gonna look spectacular. So the transition color, I'm going to use this fluffy brush for it. And I should say with the brushes, most of my brushes are e.l.f. or Wet n Wild. I also buy packs of them on Amazon, you know, where you can get like a pack for like $15. I'm not a believer that you need to take out a second mortgage just to get good brushes. I have had very good luck with cheap brushes. But this is an L Fluffy Eye Blender. And obviously it's called Fluffy because it's quite fluffy. A fluffy brush is going to spread eyeshadow out over a wider base. Your transition color is what's gonna cover most of the top part of your eye, almost up to your eyebrow. So that's why it helps to use a big fluffy brush. And as far as how far out I go, if you kind of put your brush at the tip of your nose to where your eyebrow would meet it, that's kind of a good angle to use for a guidance. I do try to get it where I want it, but after I'm done, I just take a makeup wipe and then clean up the line right there and easy peasy, you have your line. When you go to put your concealer or foundation on, you can also use that if you want to clean up that area. So as I do my eyeshadow, it might not fall into that line, but when I get done, I will be wiping it to clean up that angle. This is a light color, so you don't usually have to worry too much about a lot of fallout. If you do work with eyeshadows, like especially the darker ones, once you load it up to help with fallout, if you tap it, some of the excess will come off, less will fall out on your face. Not only does it look good when you go from darkest to lightest this way, it also kind of looks more appealing if you go darkest to lightest this way. Wherever you first put your brush down is where the majority of the pigment is going to be. So if I start with my brush out here and then blend it this way, it, even though the same color is gonna be over my whole lid, it will tend to be a little bit darker on this side. And like I said, we're gonna go all the way up to almost the brow bone. Another tool that really comes in handy is a color switch, which is basically like a wire sponge. You can clean off your brush. It won't take all the color off, but it will clean it up a little bit. So if you wanted to switch to use a different shade on that same brush, then you could. But I find it helps for blending to make the top part a little bit softer and more gradient. If I clean that off a little bit and then go in, it'll blend a little bit better. Cause if I go in without cleaning it, it might look a little bit too dark. They're usually pretty cheap. I paid a dollar for this one. If you don't want to get one, I have also found that a paper towel works really good because paper towels are kind of textured. So now I have the transition color down. I'm going to use a smaller fluffy brush to put on my crease color. It is smaller than the first brush because I don't want it to cover as wide of an area as my transition color because in order to get that gradient, I want that transition color to peek out a little bit. So I'm not going to put the crease shade all the way up. I'm also going to put it on the outer third of my eye. What I kind of use for a guidance is my eyeball. I'll bring that dark crease shade in just to the edge of whatever the blue part is. Is your iris the blue part? There's something about a rule of thirds that is appealing. You see that in photography too. So I'm going to take the crease shade on my crease part and then also in just to the edge of the blue part of my eye. My lid shade is going to be these two thirds. I am gonna try to follow that angle, but if it gets a little bit messy, I'm gonna be cleaning it up with a makeup wipe, so it's no big deal. Now with the fluffy brush, the fluffy part is gonna make the crease part blend and go easy up there. But when I go to put it on the outer corner of my eye, I'm gonna Gonna kind of pack it on because I want it to stay just in that part. Now since this is a darker color there can tend to be a little bit more fallout so I am going to tap it off just to get some of that excess off and again I'm going to start on the outer edge because I want the dark spot to be on the outside and then blend it in. And if I do get fallout on my face this is one reason I always do my eye makeup first that way when I come in with that makeup wipe and clean off any fallout then I'm not wiping away my face makeup. Speaking of fallout another good brush to have on hand would be a fan brush because it's a very very light brush if you do get some fallout on your face and say you have done your makeup already you can just brush it away a little bit. I pull these out a lot with my face paint because sometimes when I go in with shading, I get a lot of fallout. And so then I just go in with that and brush it off. Okay, crease shade. Here's where I'm gonna do kind of the packing just on that outer third and try to get it in that angle.
to blend the top edge of it, I'm gonna use that color switch again and clean off that brush. Oh, I forgot to say this one is a Morphe M506 brush. And just on that top edge where the dark brown meets the light brown, I'm gonna go over it so it's not such a harsh line. This is where a buffer brush can come in handy. They're stiffer than a fluffy brush. This one is an e.l.f. contour brush. I call them buffer brushes because you can kind of buff it. So like if you're having trouble getting something to blend, you can take this and, and go along that edge and buff it basically. I like to just clean off the brush that I was using. I think it helps just to have a tiny little bit of the dark brown on there to get them to blend together a little bit better. I love putting on eyeshadow. It is so relaxing to me. If you really want to be dramatic, you could take a black eyeshadow or a really, 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 really dark brown one and just put it on the inner edge right here. Don't blend it all the way out to the edge, but just put like a dab of black in there and then just kind of blend it in with the rest. It just adds a little bit more of a dramatic effect to it. For my lid shade, I'm going to be using the slat brush. And this is one that I got from one of my Amazon packs, so it doesn't have a name. It's just a flat brush because it's literally flat and thin. It has has a curved edge on top. Because we're putting it just in a precise spot from the inner to where the dark brown is, I have a brush that you can pack on and control a little bit better. Works well. And when they have that curve like that, because we're gonna put it all the way up to where my eyeball meets the top part of my eye, that curve somehow just kind of helps to follow your eye. When I put my lid shade on, I do start on this side and make my way this way because I want most of the color to be on this side. And as I get to here, I want it to blend more with with the dark brown. To blend it, I'm going to go back to the fluffy brush that I used to put down my crease shade. I'm not adding anything to it. And I'm also gonna use it on the edge here where the two colors meet. If you just go back and forth on there, it'll blend them. If you're having trouble with the harsh line, you can go and take your transition color and put a little bit on. And then I did wanna mention the fourth color eyeshadow. I'm not gonna use it today, but I did wanna mention it. This is another one from Color Drain that I had taken out of a palette. It helps to have an eraser shade. I learned that term by watching Angela Bright. If you're having trouble getting your eyeshadow to blend into your skin, if you find a color that is kind of similar to your skin tone, you can put that on a brush and put it on the edge of where the eyeshadow and your skin meet to help blend it, then it kind of erases the eyeshadow. But I'm not gonna use that today, but I did wanna mention that because that can be helpful if your eyeshadow's gotten a little bit out of control or it's not cooperating. I did get a little bit of fallout. Not a whole lot, I'm just taking a makeup wipe and clean up all the fallout. But then with it on my finger like this, I can just go and gently create that line that I want. I'm going to do the same on this side, put on eyeliner, mascara, and concealer, and I'll be back. I've added all that stuff, and so now we will do the lower lash line. I'm going to mimic what I did on top. I'm gonna first put down my transition color with a thicker brush, and then I'm going to use the crease color on a thinner brush. That way it'll go dark to light. And this is where if you want to start experimenting with colored eyeshadow, but you're a little nervous to put it on your whole lid, this is where you can start incorporating color a little bit. Add a blue down here, or a pink, or a purple. It'll add just a little something to the look, but then you can kind of get into color a little bit that way. So the brushes that I'm gonna use, a pencil brush, and this is another one that is from that Amazon pack, so it doesn't have a brand on it. I think it's also called a pointy brush or pointer brush. The one I'm gonna use for the crease part is a fine detail brush. You'll see that it's a little bit smaller than the pencil brush. So just like those fluffy brushes, we use the bigger one to cover a wider area and then a smaller one to cover the crease area. We're gonna do the same on the bottom. A bigger brush to put down our light color and then a smaller brush to put in our dark color. Tiny brush is, I think it was an e.l.f. one, an e.l.f. 204. So I'm gonna go back to that transition color which is that lighter brown. A tip for fallout, since I have put my concealer on, I'm probably not gonna be able to do it and still get a good angle with the camera, but if you lean forward a little bit as you're putting on that eyeshadow, more of the fallout will fall off onto your desk as opposed to on your skin. Like at the top where I started dark to light, I'm gonna do the same thing down here and just fill in that whole bottom ridge. 
going to use that color switch again just to clean off the brush and then go back just on the bottom so that it blends into my skin. Now I'm gonna go back to that crease color which is our dark brown. Taking that on the teeny tiny brush, tap it off and start on the outside edge and come in. When you get to this corner, if you wanna to try to blend that in a little bit better so it's more of a continuous line, you can add a little bit more. Now for eyeliner on the bottom, you can put it on your waterline. That's usually what I do. Another thing that I do a lot is hey, it's a wet and wild brush. I think it's called a small angled brush or something like that. It is very, very thin and it's angled. I'll take a black eye shadow and put it on there and put that not on the waterline, but right at the top. If you want to jazz this one up a little bit, you can take a white eye shadow or a really light shimmer eye shadow. You could put it just along the brow bone there. Sometimes I like putting it just on the inner corner. I'm gonna do this eye and zoom you back out. So that's how I do my eyeshadow. Again, I cannot stress it enough. This is not how you have to do your eyeshadow. Do it how you want it. You know, makeup is supposed to be all about you and what makes you happy and how you enjoy it. So don't take anything that I talked about today, like how you have to do your eyeshadow. It's just some things that I have learned that have helped me. I'd love to hear if you have any tips to do your eyeshadow. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.